This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode number 148. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And we're almost into October. I'm fired up. Well, we made it, everybody. Uh, we're pretty much past summer at this point, and we are into the fall. And that means telemark season is just right around the corner and couldn't be more stoked to be back. Although I am proud to say I've had a fun time doing the podcast this summer and talking to a ton of people. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it as well. There's always uh, something to talk about with telemark, whether you have tuned in all summer or not. Uh, I am stoked that I keep getting messages saying, hey, I listen to the podcast every week. And uh, that means, and from the numbers, it's showing that you are as well. So that's uh, exciting to me that you're tuning in for something and there's some value there for you. Pumped about that. If you didn't catch last week's episode, I was talking with Jeff Cox. He was the uh, inventor and original owner of Bluebird Day Gear, which uh, we have acquired at this point, actually acquired a few years ago. If you didn't catch the whole story, that's a fun one to go check out. And we're really excited to be more in the realm of manufacturing. We've talked a ton about uh, manufacturing uh, the protector line of skis uh, over the summer. And uh, I couldn't wait to get the Bluebird stuff out too, because that's sort of a whole another realm of possibilities for us in terms of making things and really excited about that. So hopefully you checked it out. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're over on the social medias, I've been trying to post uh, some of the pictures that Jeff sent me of the prototype process of the leashes and also of the heel levers. And it's pretty cool. I mean, he started literally, if you listen to the, to that episode, uh, starting with like cutting boards and uh, things like that, wood, plastics, wire, all sorts of stuff. And that's kind of, it's really cool to see from an inventor's perspective, sort of how it all came to be. So uh, really was excited about that. So hopefully you checked out uh, episode number 147 with Jeff Cox. If not, uh, and maybe you're just even tuning in because you tuned me out all summer. That's okay. There's plenty of episodes, one every week since you last were here. And uh, I'm here every Monday. So other than that, newsroom and notes, we're still working on an opening day uh, to get into the winter and get the uh, Free Heal Life retail shop open. Uh, mostly we're kind of just holding off a little bit because we want to make sure we've got the items in stock that we need. Uh, Majo bindings are showing up this week. So if you need uh, Majo 3.0 or the black edition, those will be in. And we've got plenty of lifestyle stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez Louise. We're not doing any editing, so sorry for the coughs, everybody. Uh, anyways, the uh, yeah, M equipment stuff starting to show up. We've got a really big parts order that came in from Scarpa, so stay on the lookout for that stuff. Uh, we've got plenty of, of new binding parts, used parts uh, to get your gear all tuned up and ready to go for the season. Uh, there is a pair or two left of the 184 centimeter protector 105s, 95s, I lied, 95s. Get on those, that's the end of batch number two. And just general inquiries, please hit up customer service at freehealthlife.com. That is, if you've got anything that you're in need of, especially the stuff like uh, boots, uh, bindings, all that stuff, all of that's kind of queued up and we kind of know when it's coming in, but it's really important to get on our radar because when these when these orders show up, there's such a pent up demand for stuff that it's really important that we know that you're there, you're interested, you need it. Um, and that way we can sort of get the conversation rolling and it's all in our view. So with that said, today's episode is going to be all about uh, Volet product. And I got onto our Facebook forum, which if you're not in the Free Heal Life Facebook forum and you are a Facebook user, that's a great place to go. Um, and a place that I'm trying to connect with all of you a little more deeply in there to be able to ask questions, what kind of content you may need. 
uh, sort of is is auxiliary is auxiliary stuff. I can't even say that word <laughs> to to the shop, the brand, what's going on. But it's important to note how we started selling volley skis, and and I wanted to bring this up just as I lead into this because this is more going to be a gear breakdown. But I think oftentimes people have looked at Free Hill Life and they're like, you know, why don't you carry all these different skis and you know, when I opened up Free Hill Life in 2014, it was really important to me to carry brands. Well, the original idea was to carry our brand. We didn't make skis. We didn't do a lot of stuff. And I was trying to carry brands where we could get money back into Telemark. And there really wasn't anybody making skis. And if you listen to any of our podcasts, we tried in 2015 to make some Free Hill Life skis, 2017. And we we succeeded, but it was... Uh, we didn't want to go that deep. And so the protector line last year was really us getting into it and manufacturing. I don't want to digress here. The The idea of why we have carried Volet is they, although not a Telemark brand, lots of people think they are. I mean, the roots are in Telemark, but they're a backcountry brand. But really, you know, they're a Salt Lake brand. They're local to us where, where we're located. And we were able to sort of uh, stick with our philosophy of what we were trying to do and they had good product. And so that's kind of how we ended up with Volet. Um, obviously as we're getting into manufacturing, we're trying to, you know, um, have competitive products in the space. So you're going to see more, more free hill life skis that, uh, are going to probably fill in the gaps with some of this Volet stuff that we've had over the years. But this is still a product that we're carrying. And in fact, this is the stuff that we have right now. And this is why I wanted to dedicate a whole episode to it because there's not only the, the volet skis to cover, but there's a lot of binding stuff to cover as well. And, and I realize uh, since we're still doing just an audio podcast, hopefully vi- it'll be video one day, uh, there may be some explanation from a visual standpoint you need. Uh, I would recommend that you go to our YouTube channel and there are quite a number of um, thing, uh, videos, things, <laughs> head over to YouTube and get some things, uh, go get some uh, video sort of visual knowledge. And if something's for, for uh, is not there that you need, uh, we can provide some sort of video, but I, th- I think this was sort of a good starting point uh, for what I was hoping to do today. All right, so this this kind of goes in conjunction with uh, our 75 millimeter package sale, where you can save 252 dollars by using coupon code 75 mm package uh, at checkout. Now, the whole idea of this was there's a bunch of Scott closeout boots. I know if you're listening to this for the first time and you you're like, well, why isn't Scott doing anything? Scott's done making Telemark boots, as far as we can tell. And we have the hook on the closeouts. So if you want to get boots, this is kind of why we put this together. There's still 75 millimeter boots available. And basically, you're going to be able to pick a volley binding, a volley ski, and a closeout Scott 75 millimeter boot and get a package where you're saving 252 bucks. So that's kind of part of what spurred this on is this is the product that is in right now. And I wanted to kind of give the breakdown. And also, I think it's awesome that uh, I can kind of get into the Volet products a little bit deeper. And we can talk 75 millimeter bindings, (laughs) which uh, since I started the podcast, many of you know that are faithful listeners that many people think that we are like anti 75 millimeter and that we only talk about the new telemark norm or the ntn but guess what 75 is there and it's we're very very well versed in this um i make sure that the the free heel life staff is well versed in everything from a three pin binding all the way up to the modern ntn equipment this is very very important on a lot of levels for us to understand. So let's uh, let's get into this. I'm going to take a little sip of uh, coffee as we get into this. And again, I apologize for no edits because sometimes you're just going to hear some slurping and some sipping on some hot cup of Joe. 
and you're just going to have to deal with it so I can get my speed juice in as I like to call it. And it keeps me going fast. Hopefully not too fast. You might have to slow the podcast down to understand what I'm saying. All right. Speed juiced up, ready to go. That hot bean water. Um, so let's get into this. I want to, I want to talk about bindings first. Vole bindings. These are some of the OG of the OG bindings. And you know, there's a lot of different applications for, for volet bindings. And, and this was something that kind of came, I, I threw it out in the forum last week. I, funny enough, I kind of didn't get the response I was looking for. I kind of thought we would, uh, there'd be a lot of questions about volet bindings. And I was kind of surprised not to see as many as I thought. So here is my unsolicited attempt at giving you some advice on volet bindings. Um, as far as I'm just going to go through the lineup and talk a little bit about them and the application of them, and then also where they might be good crossovers for past bindings that don't exist anymore. And maybe you're afraid to kind of jump ship into the new stuff. So, um, we do sell the, uh, HD Mountaineer three pin binding from Vole. I don't, it, if you want a three pin binding and you have leather boots, or a T4 Scarpa style low cuff two buckle, or even an old school T2, maybe even a T2 Eco boot. Um, I'm gonna rely mostly in the Scarpa realm because that's what we sell the most of. Uh, three pin bindings are rad. I mean, they're, they're good to have in the quiver, and especially if you're looking to create sort of like a vintage setup, which we're, you know, we're always talking about that, especially as we get into into the winter. We love having that in the quiver. Uh, also, if you've got like a scaled type ski, we'll talk a little bit about those. Uh, awesome. Three pin, very effective, awesome thing to get. Now, if you want to bump up a level, the three pin cable telemark binding, that's in my opinion, that's kind of the money, right? Because the thing is, is you get, you get the three pin binding and Volet's traditional three pin cable, the cable flexes. And so you can pop that thing off, throw it in your backpack, have a three pin set up. Uh, and then it's, it's a, you know, if you get to a downhill where you want a little more support, uh, maybe you're not so savvy on the low cuff boot three pin vibe. Uh, it's nice to have that little cable. Um, incredibly effective binding, in my opinion, from just a utility standpoint where, uh, it's just, it's easy to fix, easy to work on. It's also a backup system because you've got a three pin toe that clamps down and you have a, a, uh, a side throw on a cable. So if the cable fails, you've got the pins. If, um, if the pins fail, you've got a cable type of deal. Awesome. Very good for, you know, it really depends on your level of telemarking at this point. Again, a Nordic downhill technique. So when I say telemarking, I'm not talking about hiking. I'm talking about how good are you at making a telemark turn on a free heel set of skis? Uh, and for that matter, are you good at making a parallel turn? Cause you're probably going to need that too. But, uh, if I had to choose, you know, between a, a three pin, cable in a regular three pin. It's just, you've got the little side things to put the cables on, on the three pin cable, even a step up, you add a small shim with some climbing wires and you've got what they call the three pin cable traverse. It's literally, it's a, it's a shim kit. So it gets you up off the skis, lets you angulate a little bit better. And it's got the climbing posts. So even more of a bonus. And, uh, you know, you're coming in at around 200 bucks for that binding. I mean, kind of hard to beat, honestly, uh, to find a binding that's like that. And it's, it's just, that thing's been around since the eighties in some form or another. So three pin cable traverse again, um, it's, it, it's the three pin cable, but just with a little shim. So if I'm going like, uh, a ski that maybe it's a scaled ski underfoot, like a waxless pattern as we would call it. Uh, that's a great binding, you know, for that kind of thing. Good application. Again, am I going to go rip as hard as I can on a binding like this? Um, I probably can, 
just because I've ski, literally skied every binding forever. Uh, I'm nearing my 30th year of telemark skiing this year. Uh, <laughs> so I've been, I've been on a lot of stuff. Uh, but this is just kind of OG. Original gangster. So uh, it's, a, it's a good binding. I like the climbing wider. I like what they did with kind of retooling the traverse. And it's, you know, it's a shim kit. I like it. Uh, going back into bindings, uh, I wanted to cover one volley binding that, you know, you don't see it as often anymore. Maybe a used pair. Um, but the, uh, the volley three pin cable, kind of a sleeper, um, kind of a sleeper of a, of a binding, um, and I wanted to bring it up. Or, I'm sorry, three pin hardwire, not the cable. I just talked about the three pin cable. Um, Volet, uh, the three pin hardwire is literally, someone did actually bring this up in the forum and I, I wanted to mention it because they had the hardwire binding for a while and now they still got the three pin hardwire, which is pretty much what we just described, but it's a little bit bigger shim meaning it's a little plastic piece under the foot, lifting you off the ski, giving you better edge ability. Um, three pin hardwire, literally one of my favorite, favorite all time end of story bindings in the 75 millimeter realm. I skied it for years and it, people don't realize that the pivot point on a three pin hardwire is actually a little bit further back than their original hardwire, which is out of, out of, uh, they're, they're not making that anymore. You can get the three pin hardwire though. Highly recommend. So I want to three pin hardwire. If you're coming from a G three Targa, we're going to talk a lot about the Targa in this episode because here's the thing. News flash. The Targa has not been made for multiple, multiple years now. Uh, can you get used parts? N- yes, through us. <laughs> so there's your pitch on used Targa parts. Uh, would we highly recommend that you move to a new binding, even 75 millimeter, that is going to have better performance and available parts? Yes. And these are the bindings. Volet is the easiest switch. If you're coming from a G3 Targa and you absolutely do not want to move forward with this and you're just kicking and screaming and you're like, I love my red cable Targas. These are the best bindings ever. Guess what? It's only going to be a pain in the ass and a pain in your pocketbook to deal with these things. So I'm not even saying it wasn't a good binding in its time. That is not what I'm trying to pitch you on. I'm trying to hit you on. We're always saying we don't want to change your style when we change equipment, right? But going over to a, something like a three pin hardwire, again, I would recommend that for a resort skier. Um, and we'll talk about what to do if you're a backcountry skier as well, but straight up, you want a good three pin. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, a good binding to go Targa inbounds and you don't need tourability or you're okay touring on a three pin. That's the three pin hardware, rad, rad binding and a good price point. It's like 260. Anyways, that's kind of a sleeper one. People don't bring up anymore because it doesn't have a tour mode. Uh, back in the day we used, to, I mean, I, I will speak for myself. I toured on the three pin, latched the hardwire down and then I'd, you know, get to the top. This is kind of pre Black Diamond 01, switch back, all that stuff. Great binding though. I just want to give it a shout out, you know, because uh, it's it's a rad binding. So back to the target. If you're looking to come get a better binding that's going to last and you can get parts for it and you're coming from the G3 Targa, my recommendation is Volley Switchback. Regular Switchback, Okay. Because the pivot point, and there's a video on YouTube that I did about this many years ago, 
pivot point versus stiffness. And I'm not going to go into it here, but I'll put it in the show notes. Go check it out. Check out the YouTube channel. The pivot point on a regular switchback is more like a G3 Targa and it's available and the parts are available and it's easy to service. If you want to cut and it's got a hard wire rather than a cable, brilliant idea because hard wires, although they can bend over time, the ones that the current model that they've had forever, I mean, that hard wire is pretty tough and uh, well worth the upgrade. If you want to go with a pivot point that's a little more aggressive, little stiffer spring as well, go with the Switchback X2. And that's going to take your game from a G3 target and sort of like notch it up. You're going to go notch up, let's say not one notch up for, for Switchback, two notches or three notches up for Switchback X2. Love the X2. think it's a great binding. Easy, easy, free pivot, tour mode on it. Easy to switch in and out of with your pole. Money, very, very, very simple. Love it, love it, love it. And for the ladies out there, there is a women's switchback, little bit softer spring if you want to go that route. Um, and you're maybe, uh, you know, honestly, it's, it's uh, I would say, weight preference uh, to flex springs and also personal preference. So same thing like going back to the Targa. I mean, you had silver, uh, you had a silver spring, you had a red spring. Uh, I'm sorry, you had green, silver, and red. And those were your options. And it, 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 it was a stiffer, less stiff up to more stiff spring. Same thing in the Volley lineup. You're just gonna, you're gonna get a little bit different load on that spring. Uh, and if you're a big dude like me, sometimes you like the stiffer springs, you know, um, not always though, just kind of depends on the application. So kind of rounding things out with the volet stuff. So I know I said I was going to dig into the 75 millimeter stuff. They are offering their own TTS telemark tech system, which is technically not an NTN binding, but you need, because it, it has a real heel connection, meaning it has an old school cable around the heel, doesn't connect to the duck butt or second heel on the boot, but it utilizes an NTM boot and you need that for the tech toe fitting on the front. We don't need to get too far into that, but again, the consistent theme with Volet over the last 40 some years that they've been around, they, they stick to fundamental basics they don't get too tricky, and they are a backcountry brand. So what they make is stuff that is good in the backcountry. Just remember, they're not a Telemark-specific brand. Although they grew through Telemark in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, that's not like they're, they don't identify themselves as a Telemark brand. They're a backcountry brand. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to the skis here in a minute, but just keep that in mind. They have, they sell Telemark bindings, but for instance, their skis aren't Telemark specific, which is totally fine. I mean, we're, we're not making, I would say the difference with Free Heel Life is we are a Telemark brand and we are making skis, not Telemark skis, we're making skis. You wanna put whatever bindings you want on them, go for it. Awesome. But the money is going back to Telemark 100%. All right. So that's kind of the breakdown on Vole bindings. And really, I mean, it's they're just a great, when you get to Telemark bindings, Vole is just a great place to go for 75 millimeter bindings. Also simplicity of 75 millimeter bindings. And I can't emphasize that enough. You know, some people I definitely would push to, you know, the 22 designs realm of things like Axel and Vice, but honestly, there's, it's such a fantastic step to go from, if you are in a G3 target, we're seeing less and less every year just because we're getting further and further from when, when those all, everyone had them in the early 2000s. I mean, we're talking like over, t like over 20 plus years. 
I think it came out in 99, I want to say, maybe even earlier. I mean, you're literally talking like we're, we're heading towards 25 years. So at some point they just go extinct. So if you're a G3 Targa skier and you're listening to this and you're like, man, I love my G3 Targas. I, I love how they operate and I know how expensive it is to find used parts and then they break anyways. What should I get to? Volley switchback. Volley switchback X2. Women switchback or that little sleeper one, Volley three pin hardwire. And then there's those other applications for the three pin cable or the Mountaineer HD three pin, all great bindings. So I know that's a lot of binding info, but as you're going to put this package together this week, if, if you're, you want to take advantage of this deal that we got going on, uh, and you, you're like, Madsen gave me all these ideas for these bindings. I literally don't know what to do. That's where you hit us up. Customer service at freeheallife.com. And one of us is going to reach out and we're going to walk you through that process of feel what you're trying to do, where you ski, you know, and walk you into the next 75 millimeter binding. If that's the right fit for you. Uh, If you're looking to go NTN, I mean, we can go that route as well, but that's a good start. All right. So getting into the skis, volley skis, there are quite a number of, of the volley skis and there's sort of different applications for them as with any piece of gear. (coughs) Excuse me. I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal experience on this stuff. And I'm just going to kind of go through, literally I'm going through our website and what's available. Again, these are all available now. You can save money by putting them in a 75 millimeter package uh, or you can get them, you know, separate or whatever. Uh, So let me, let let me start off right with the ultra vector. Uh, This is the first one on our webpage. Uh, that you can find. So it comes in three sizes, 171, 177, 184. I'm not going to go through every single size of every ski, but let me just give you the vibe because Volet, I've had like a sort of a, I don't love hate. Maybe that's like a weird, uh, maybe love hate. Let's just go with love hate. Let's go with love hate. When, when I first started skiing on Volet skis, I struggled. Like I just, I couldn't get down with them. And it was just like, you know, especially skiing inbounds. And that's where, again, I'm giving you my, uh, I'm giving you my breakdown. So I guess, you know, to divulge like who's talking on the other end here. So I'm, I'm six foot, you know, I'm probably, you know, on a good day, like 195, you know, you know, over 200, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm a big dude, right. And I ski hard. Uh, (laughs) I try to be as finesse as possible, but sometimes I just, you know, I'm just like an aggressive skier and that's kind of how I get after it. You know, um, you know, I ski, I I get it. I get some backcountry days in, um, you know, and a busy winter. I mean, total, you know, straight up, I'm, I'm going to the resort, you know, like I don't have a lot of time. I'm getting on a lift. I'm doing hot laps, that sort of thing, you know, and then I'm, I'm looking for a ski that's going to perform, you know, in that scenario where, you know, it might not be a powder day. I might be able to find a little bit of goods over in the trees. I want something that's going to maneuver well, all that kind of stuff. So that's sort of like my background. Um, so I'm going to kind of try to break these down. So the Volley Ultra Vector, a hundred percent, this is like the go-to Volley ski for me. And you know, this thing, uh, they actually change their, their, uh, width underfoot as they change sizes, but you're basically between 94 and 98 underfoot. Um, you know, when we, when we were making the protector 95, I mean, this is, this is competing in that space. I think the ultra vector is more, uh, all volet skis, I would say to me feel like they're, they're made for, more of a backcountry application, but could be used in a resort. Doesn't mean they don't operate good in a resort, but I'm just saying, just think about what Volet is as a brand. You know, that's that's what they're making skis for. It's a backcountry brand. So, but Ultra Vector, I will say the layup 
works really well uh, in balance for me. It's got the classic shape, same thing like we did with the Protector 95, early tip rise, a little bit of traditional camber, a little bit of tail rise uh, to kind of make it you know move around nice and easy. Ultra Vector, I like that 95 under foot. It's easy, easy to move around. I can do moguls, I can, but it's not, it, the big thing with volet skis is like, I feel like the torsional rigidity. So if you're not familiar with that turn, like if you're twisting the ski, there's a little more rigidity in this ski and it's got a little more, it's a little better for my, uh, my size, you know, I can push into it. I feel like it's going to operate. It holds an edge. Well, I really like it. So kind of all around. And I like the 95 ish underfoot. I think that's like the money ski right now for what I'm looking for. Personally, it's very versatile. It's good on a powder day. If I've got one ski I got to pull out and use for all stuff, I like that 95 under foot. So Volley Ultra Vector, it's killer. Um, now, the same type of layup is more or less the supercharger. So if you go, I did a 2019, 2020 Volley Supercharger YouTube video review. You can check it out. Um, now, this is, this is like a... Uh, 104 to 108 underfoot. But again, like our protector 105 is like kind of competing in this space, you know, uh, other than, you know, our skis are a sidewall construction. These are cap construction and there's definitely, um, I would say ours are torsionally, uh, a little more, uh, aggressive, you know, in terms of edge hold and stuff like that. And these cap skis, they, they can do well, but sometimes uh, supercharger, I think does really well, um, like the ultra vector. But as we get into some of these other skis, I'll mention, I don't think the edge hold is there as much for inbounds. So supercharger, very similar feel. It's just wider underfoot. Uh, I mean, I love, I love these skis too. I mean, this is the kind of ski like I can go on at Alta and just rip hot laps. I can hit soft snow. I like having that. I mean, out here in Utah, we're spoiled, right? Like, I mean, we always joke around. Like, if it's not Bluebird and there's like some sort of packed powder, it's like no one's even going up, you know? So most of the time, I mean, people don't even sharpen their edges out here most of the time. You know, I know you're, if you're over on like deer Valley side and you're just like, you're lame. We always like, you know, always sharpen our skis. No, I mean, get a good tune. It really does make a difference. But you know, I think about being younger growing up here. I mean, tuning skis was just like, eh, whatever. Like I'm not really dealing with that, that, <laughs> that often. Uh, nowadays, maybe a little bit more, uh, as I get old and grumpy and want nicer things. So so supercharger ultra vector, those are in the same camp. Okay. I think out of all the volet skis, I think those are the best all around fit for resort and backcountry. If you had to get a volet ski, if you're looking to put one of those in your package and that's the kind of skiing you want to do, uh, that's, that's, that's where the money's at for me. Okay. Now the next one is the Manti. Manta is kind of an interesting, um, I would say this is where it kind of transitions for me um, a little bit because, um, you know, the Manta is w between 102 and one, 105 under foot. It's kind of like the supercharger, but it's got more of a playful vibe to it. Like it, um, it's, uh, it's just got a much more, uh, I'm always trying to come up with the right word because it, it it's kind of got more of a slippy, slidey feel to it. That's kind of the way I feel about it. And you're seeing that in a lot of ski manufacturers these days. It's kind of this real like pivoty feel. Like it's real easy to just sort of shift your feet back and forth, noodling back and forth, which is a good thing. I tend to go a little more traditional, you know, like traditional camber, love the early tip rise. The slippy slidey thing is fun, but it's not like I'm going to hate a ski if it doesn't have it. Um, there's a really thorough review of the Manti on our YouTube channel. 
Uh, I posted it in the forum on Facebook as well. So you can scope that out and you can see me skiing and talking about it and all that good stuff. But uh, Manti, yeah, same kind of same width underfoot. Um, another good option. Um, me personally, I would, I have ski to inbounds. I, I would probably, if I'm going 105 underfoot, I'm probably going supercharger over Manti personally. If I'm going on for a ski, 105 under foot that goes out of bounds and inbounds, and I feel good about it. Um, just kind of my personal preference. So uh, now we're getting into the V6. That's the next one. And okay, V6 and V8. These were the first. Um, I'm pretty sure these predate Supercharger Ultra Vector. Almost 100% sure. I, I don't totally remember, but. V6 and V8. Let me talk a little bit about these because I've skied them like quite a bit. I'm not, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not as big a fan of these skis. Now, it's probably because I feel like the the shovel, just when I ski them in soft snow, I feel like, so like backcountry skiing on the V6 and V8, um, I took the V8 actually on a uh, a week long hut trip out in the British Columbia backcountry a couple of years ago, and it performed great. Like untouched snow, uh, nothing too deep, but it was a great backcountry trip. Really fun touring, um, and that V8 is a little bit wider underfoot. Um, you're looking at like 107 all the way up to like. I think I was on like a 115 underfoot millimeters, but it it wasn't like plow. Th- it was a really fun ski for what we were skiing, which was high alpine, soft snow. Totally dug it. Now it's a different vibe of digging it, quote unquote, because I always feel like the shovel's so soft that when I'm pushing into that telly turn. My front ski, I feel like the shovel, the early rise tip comes planes up to the top, which I love, but it's almost like it, it's almost too soft for me. I like that charging feeling. Like I want that tip to plane upward with that early tip rise, but not sort of fold back on me. So I had an amazing trip. I love the V8, V6 skis very similarly. It's just a little less underfoot, but I just, it's not, I, I would, I would, much rather a supercharger over the V8 personally. Uh, and I would rather have an ultra vector over a V6 personally. I just feel like they're more versatile, the layup and the way it feels. But uh, V6 is really good too. So the the biggest difference I personally see, again, I'm, I'm really giving like my personal take on these because there's a lot of other people that like, that are probably flip-flop, just like every pair of skis out there. The V6 inbounds and and the V8 in the size I'm skiing with like one V8, I feel like it's too much underfoot for what I care for inbounds these days. You know, when I was like younger 20 something dude and I'm like, yeah, 115 underfoot all day, every day. (laughs) Like I just, I don't think like that anymore, you know, and it's just evolution of thought. I think the majority of the ski business has moved away from that. I think 110 is maybe max, you know, for most like, uh, Rocky mountain all day qu- or, uh, you know, single quiver ski, you know, like one Oh five, I think it's the sweet spot. 95 me personally kind of old school. I like that little nimble aspect of it. So V eight kind of out, that's more backcountry for me. So the V six like inbounds, now, I was talking about torsional rigidity. I feel like the V6 for me inbounds, and this goes for the V8, but the V6 I feel like is more likely you might choose that as sort of this all-around ski. I would try to ski it, and we usually have these in our rental fleet. It's a it's a good option, but not if you like a stiff, torsionally speaking, ski, and laterally too. I mean, it's soft kind of both ways. So for a beginner skier or intermediate skier that doesn't want a really aggressive ski, that soft torsional rigidity could be a good thing. 
I don't really like it. I feel like there's just, it's too, too wishy-washy and, and kind of get, I don't like it because on hard, on hard snow, I end up getting that foot sort of skipping because I can't engage the edge the way I want it to. So that's kind of my take on the V6. Like I said, I had an awesome time in the backcountry on a V8 and I've skied V6 in the backcountry. It's a good combination. Um, but I'm probably thinking, you know, that combo, I'm probably going with like, um, you know, switch back and X2, switch back X2 and kind of that combo. Uh, if I'm in a 75 millimeter ski package and that's what I'm going to keep as my backcountry setup. So quick recap, if I'm putting a ski package together with Volet and I'm, I'm going 75 millimeter all the way. Me personally, if I'm going to get a ski that goes between resort and backcountry sort of equally in terms of I'm going to feel great no matter where I go, whatever day of the week, I'm probably going to go switch back X2, switch back regular on an ultra vector or a supercharger. Those are my top two choices. And really the width underfoot is the only determining factor of where I'm going to land on those two. Everything else feels kind of the same. Now, if I'm going to go over to like backcountry only setup and I kind of want that versatility of, uh, I kind of want more of a slippy slidey. I might go Manti and put those same bindings on there. Uh, or I might, go into V6, V8 realm. Again, it's it's kind of what you're looking for and we can walk you through that stuff. Really cool lineup of skis. Much respect to Volet. I mean, they manufacture everything in-house. They're in Salt Lake City. And uh, I mean, they're a huge inspiration for us because you know we definitely have looked at these uh, these guys putting stuff out for so long. And... Uh, I love that. So respect Volet and uh, hope you guys keep doing this stuff. But that's sort of my breakdown on the Volet pa- uh, ski package that we've got going on and kind of giving you just the whole lowdown on what the skis do, what the bindings do, and kind of how you can combine those. As far as um, sort of combining the, uh, you know, what boots uh, there's the Scott voodoo 75 millimeter, uh, that's available still. And that's kind of what I think is left at this point. And then the women's, uh, there's maybe a few Scott Minerva 75 millimeter closeouts, any 75 millimeter boots, obviously going to work. Uh, but hit us up at customer service at freehealthlife.com. If you need help walking through all this, uh, otherwise, you can use the coupon code to get you through that. Uh, but we know how much it's important to walk through and kind of have a backboard to talk through, bounce ideas off of, and hey, I'm coming from this and whatever. So, uh, but yeah, that's my volley breakdown of bindings and skis. And hopefully that was helpful. I haven't really done a deep dive like that into this. And I think that's um, probably a good place to kind of end this one. Um, as always sign up for our mailing list. So basically what you're going to do when you get that is we usually send out one at the beginning of the week, one at the end of the week, keeping you in the know about free heal life. What are we doing? What kind of stuff's coming on sale? What new stuff has arrived? This is the time as we head into October this week, this is a great time to be part of our, our community. And that's what we're doing here is building a community of Telemark skiers that vibe on our brand, what we're doing, where we're heading. And uh, that'll connect you to everything we're doing from uh, Free Heel Life, Bluebird Day Gear, uh, Telemark Skier Magazine, all that stuff, where you can find forums to chat with other people, events going on, and the like. Uh, so much great stuff. And I'm so stoked for another great winter coming up. You can find me personally on the social media at Josh Nomadson and uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, in the forums and uh, super psyched to be in there. 
You can find uh, Free Heal Life at Free Heal Life across all the platforms as well. And uh, we're gearing up to uh, really get this thing going. Thank you for all your support, love, buying stuff from us, keeping us going, keeping our crew going. Uh, We can't thank you enough. So until next week, spread telemark always, my friends. I'll see you later.